ಶ್ರೀರಸಾತನಂ ಶ್ರೀಮಹಾಗಣಾಧಿಪತ ನಮಃ ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರು ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರು ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಮವಾಚ ಋಷಿ ಕೇಶ ಪ್ರಹನ್ ಪ್ರಹಸನಿವ ಭಾರತ ದೇರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಮಿಕ್ ವೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಹೌ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ದಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ಅನಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಈ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈಲಮ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಧರ್ಮ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲೈಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಬಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ಫುಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ನ್ಯಾರೋ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆಮಾನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಅಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಹಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಮ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಸೀಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶೋಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋಹ ದ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಮಕಾರ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶೋಕ ಮೋಹ ಲೋಭ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೆ ಮಾಡಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪೆಕ್ಯುಲಿಯರ್ ಟು ಅರ್ಜುನ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಟು ಅರ್ಜುನ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಸ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಅನಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎ ಲಾರ್ಜರ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈನ್ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೇ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತ ನಾಮ ತೇಷಾಂ ವಾಂಗ್ಮನ ಕಾಯಾದೀನ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತಿ ಫಲಾಭಿಸಂಧಿ ಪೂರ್ವಿ ಕೈವ ಸಾಹಂಕಾರಾಜ ಭವತಿ ವೈ ರೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈವನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಧರ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮ ದೇರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಫಾರ್ ಅಭಿಸಂಧಿ ದಟ್ ಫಲಾಭಿಸಂಧಿ ಫಲೇ ಅಭಿಸಂಧಿ ದಟ್ ಈಗರ್ನೆಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸಾಹಂಕಾರ associated with that i feeling i want this i am i am doing this i am the karta i want the result so that is the picture so what happens then so next we will read tatraivam sati dharma dharmo vachayat ishta nishta janma sukha dukha samprapti lakshana samsara ಅನುಪರತೋ ಭವತೀತ್ಯತ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬೀಜಭೂತ ಶೋಕಮೋಹ ತಯೋಶ್ಚರ್ಮ ಸಂನ್ಯಾಸಪೂರ್ವಕ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ನಾನ್ಯತ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಓಕೆ ತತ್ರ ಸತಿ ತತ್ರ ಐವಂ ಸತಿ ತತ್ರ ಏವಂ ಸತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಸ್ಟೇ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿತ್ ದ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಐ ವಿತ್ ದ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಐ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುವಲ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ವೈಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ತತ್ರ ಐವಂ ಸತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ತತ್ರ ಏವಂ ಸತಿ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಒನ್ ಡಸ್ ಎ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಫಲಾಭಿಸಂಧಿ then he will get the result it is only when you do not want the result you will not get the result when you want the result you will definitely get the result so that means the result is either dharma or adharma if you are doing a dharmic action you will get the result as dharma if you are doing an adharmic action you will get the result the result will be adharma only so that will be something negative negative result so tatra evam sati dharma dharma upachaya dharma dharma upachaya is dharma plus adharma plus upachaya dharma dharma upachaya that means upachaya is accumulation amassing so this man by doing dharma he is
this because of this thing he will get into this cycle of samsara samsara i, I told you samsara doesn't mean wife children etc samsaranam samyak sarana sam sarana sarana samyak sarana that is moving from one body to another jiva transmigrating from one body to another is called samsara so that becomes inevitable anuparatah not inevitable unending na plus uparati uparati is withdrawal anuparatah means there is no withdrawal from that that becomes unending anuparatah bhavati why and what type of thing is it dharma dharma upachaya ishtanishta janma sukha dukha samprati lakshana samsara he is giving a description he is giving a description or some adjective to what type of samsara it is that type of samsara is ishta anishta janma sukha dukha samprati lakshana sometimes you get a good janma that is ishta in fact in 18th chapter we are going to see one line uh, karma is phalam because the result of a karma is threefold is it okay and uh, the result of karma is threefold sometimes it is a very uh, very positive thing ishta sometimes it is very negative anishta sometimes it is a mixture of both ishta and anishta ishta is something which is desired anishta is something which is not desired mishram is something which is mixed so ishta janma is something which is which belongs to some higher lokas anishta janma is something which belongs to some lower lokas something like hell there are different types of hell which are described in our uh, say books puranas mukhya mainly so mix 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 the thing both mixture of good and evil then you get a manushya janma or something some other janma in the manushya janma mainly in this uh, loka this anishta anishta also includes the animal anishta janma means also being born as some lower animal so that is again that is an anishta janma so ishta janma or anishta janma anishta janma then what do you get in that sukha dukha samprapti lakshana it is characterized by this uh, acquire having or characterized by sukha and dukha in the ishta janma you will have sukha in the anishta janma you will have dukha and mishra mishra he has not mentioned here anishta mishtam mishtam te devidam karmana phalam that is a shloka which we are going to get in 18th chapter yeah, but here he has not mentioned that anishta that we can it's not a very significant thing so ishta anishta janma sukha dukha samprapti lakshana so this samsara is characterized by the result which is either positive or negative which is either highly desirable or undesirable or mixed also so you can also include that there is no harm so that sort of samsara anuparatah bhavati so it becomes unending it never ends it is incessant so because of that anuparatah bhavati ityatah ityatah means therefore ityatah because because of that samsara bija bhutau shokam shokam mohau the seeds of samsara shoka moha this shoka and moha again arise out of this feeling of i and mine the shoka and moha they are the seeds for this samsara samsara bija bhutau shoka mohau tayoscha nivrutti hi katham tayoscha means of them katham nivrutti hi nivrutti means how to get rid of them how to get rid of this bija samsara bija how to get rid of them the only remedy he sees is tayoscha sarva karma sanyasa purvaka atma gyanat na anyatah atma gyanat atma gyana deva nivrutti hi so that is the main uh, body of the text body of the line line atma gyana nivrutti hi what nivrutti of what nivrutti of shoka and moha nivrutti of shoka and moha is only possible because of by atma gyana atma gyana is realization of one self that the self is not a very limited thing that realizing that i am one with the brahman i am not different from Brahm, brahman i am this body is something which is a temporary a sort of defining factor what do you call a limiting agent in sanskrit there is a technical word called upadhi i think i might have used that word upadhi upadhi is it is a temporary defining feature it is a temporary feature which defines a particular thing at a particular time but that is not the permanent uh, nature my permanent nature is consciousness my permanent nature is nothing different from that absolute brahman so that is what is atma gyana so that atma gyana nishta is constantly abiding in that gyana is that nishta so that is the picture so upon unless you get a larger picture unless you have a larger picture man continues to have this shoka and moha so long as man uh, confines himself to his limited self so long as he feels that he is like this and then he is 
say he has a social status, he is born in a particular thing, he has, his relations are like this. So, so long as a man feels like that, so uh, this is actually we are talking about a sadhaka. We are not talking about a man of the world. A man of the world also is supposed to develop some little bit of detachment, some amount of detachment. But for a sadhaka, this is essential. Without this sort of feeling, a sadhaka will not be a sadhaka. <laughs> An ordinary man on the street, he may not have this feeling. But for him also, it is useful. Anybody in the world, because the problem is universal, anybody who wants to have a solution to his problems, anybody who wants to have some sort of resolution of his mental conflicts, his uh, tensions and whatnot, tensions and worries, it is better for him, it is always useful for him to have a larger picture. But such a thing is most essential for a sadhaka, for, an atma, for somebody who is in the path of knowledge, it is highly essential. So that is what he is mentioned, he is mentioned here. Tayoscha, Tayoscha means they, they refer to uh, Shoka and Moha. Sarva karma sanyasa purvaka dhatma jnana na anyataha. Not, uh, it is not otherwise. Na anyataha means not otherwise. Nivrutti is not possible in any other manner except by Sarva karma sanyasa purvaka dhatma jnana. Except by atma jnana. Which is preceded by Sarva karma sanyasa purvaka. Purvaka is preceded by Sarva karma sanyasa. This Atma Jnana should be preceded by Sarva Karma Sanyasa. That is abandoning all action, abandoning all karmas. Karma, karma we will tell you, we will go to some slides, I will tell you what is meant by karma and what is, uh, what is the context and all that. So Sarva Karma Sanyasa Purvaka Atma Jnana Deva Nivrutti. So that Nivrutti, that is freedom from those that Shoka and Moha, getting rid of this Shoka and Moha, is possible only by Atma Jnana, which is preceded by Sarva Karma Sanyasa, that is abandoning all the karmas which are prescribed by the Vedas. So that is the meaning here. Tad Upadidikshuhu Sarva Lokanugrahartham Arjunam Nimitti Kutya Aha Bhagavan Vasudevaha Ashochyan Ityadi Yes, that upadidikshuhu. Upadidikshuhu means desirous of teaching. Upadeshtum icha. I told you what is called sananta pratyaya. Jignyasa, gyatum icha, bhubuksha, bhogtum icha. That is, is desire to eat. Like that, the upadidikshva. Upadidikshva is upadeshtum icha. Desire to teach. Desire to uh, give this message. One who is having that desire is upadidikshu. That Upadidikshuhu, who is this Upadidikshuhu? Bhagavan Vasudeva. Bhagavan Vasudeva is the subject here. Bhagavan Vasudeva, Lord Vasudeva. Vasudeva is again uh, Vasanti. He is the person who dwells in everybody. Uh, the, deva, the Deva who resides in everybody. That means he, now it is not as though the body is there and then Vasudeva is somewhere in the heart. It's not like that. Residing in everybody means the same consciousness which is illumining the minds of everybody. That's, we should take the meaning like that. We should not say, when we say that Vasudeva is in everybody, the body is like this, somewhere in the heart, somewhere, somewhere in the corner of the heart, Vasudeva is there in a small tiny, we should not imagine like that. So Vasudeva means that supreme consciousness, the ever, uh, uh, say, the omnipresent uh, consciousness, it is the thing which is illumining this thing also. It cannot be otherwise. So that is the meaning of Vasudeva. That upani the upadidikshuhu, upadeshtu micha, desirous of teaching this. Then, sarva lokanugrahartham. It is not as though I mean, Arjuna's, Krishna's message is confined only to Arjuna. Sarva loka anugrahartham. It is to bless the whole world. Anugraha is, say, when a person is compassionate. That is called anugraha. A sense of the state of being compassionate. That is anugraha. Uh, say, the, to benefit, for the benefit of the entire humanity, for the benefit of this universe, Sarva Loka Anugrahartham, Arjunam Nimitti Krutya. Nimitta is a pretext. Arjuna here is only a pretext. Arjuna's problem is only a pretext. Of course, he is solving Arjuna's problem also, but then he is taking it from that narrow context and he is universalizing and then analyzing this thing and then giving a message for all mankind. So that is the picture here. So Sarvalokanugrahartham, 
अर्जुनम निमित्ती कृत्या भगवान आह 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 भगवान वासुदेवः तो दैट इज व्हाई वी से कृष्णम वंदे जगत गुरुम यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड दैट कृष्णम वंदे जगत गुरुम आई बाउ टू कृष्ण हु इज द जगत गुरु इन फैक्ट कृष्ण लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज रेफर्ड टू एज द फर्स्ट जगत गुरु सो वी नव डेज वी कम अक्रॉस सो मेनी से टाइम्स सो एंड सो जगत गुरु आचार्य सो एंड सो जगत गुरु आचार्य एंड वॉट नॉट द मीनिंग ऑफ जगत यू नो आई टोल्ड यू आई थिंक आई टोल्ड यू जगत इज समथिंग विच इज ऑलवेज चेंजिंग गच्छति इति जगत मीनिंग ऑफ द मीनिंग एक्चुअल मीनिंग ऑफ जगत इज दट विच कीप्स ऑन चेंजिंग गच्छति इति जगत देर इज ऑलवेज अ सोशल चेंज इट ऑल्सो रेफर्स टू द सोशल चेंज द टेक्स प्लेस इन द सोसाइटी एंड देन गुरु इज अ पर्सन हु इज सपोज टू अंडरस्टैंड दट सोशल चेंज he is the dharma doesn't the, there is a uh, unchanging aspect of dharma i told you there is a changing aspect of dharma there is an unchanging aspect of dharma so this unchanging aspect of the dharma the guru has to uh, hold on to that and then keeping in view the change the, the jagat then the end jagat because of the, 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 the world is always in a state of flux the, uh, whatever is happening in the world is always in a state of flux it is always in a state of change so keeping in view that permanent uh, value he should see that 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 message is transferred from generation to generation in a newer and newer idiom so that is actually the meaning of jagat guru jagat guru doesn't mean uh, sticking to a particular ritual which was prescribed some 2000 years ago we should all they should also see what is the social change in fact i was telling you one of the basic failures in our hindu society is not able to understand social change we have not understood social change all our brilliant youth are now they totally cut off from our tradition because the religious leaders they have not understood the social change they have not developed mechanisms to transmit our education to the say, to the youngsters whatever be the social change we should be able to transmit we should be able to transmit something so there we have failed so that is where uh, we have failed to understand the social change so that is the real meaning of jagat guru is that Jagat Guru doesn't mean that the Lord of the universe and what not. It also means um, uh, for the entire universe, the, the, the dharma which is applicable for the whole universe. That is what we call our dharma, sanatana dharma. There are some permanent values. <coughs> so this Bhagav- Arjuna Nidhikti Kutya, we are coming back to this. Arjuna is a pretext. He says, uh, then Bhagavan, he says, uh, taking Arjuna as a, a sort of an example, he gives a message to the whole world. now we are entering a small discussion uh, say here if we go through the text straight away then it will be difficult to understand both the text and the meaning if we try to understand the language you may miss the meaning and if you try to understand the meaning you will not understand the language so what i will do is i will give a summary of this text i will give a summary of the text by means of a few uh, slides and then thereafter we will come to the text and read uh, word by word i'll please go to the first um, slide and be on that slide for a minute or two and then come back to me so here in this passage what shankaracharya is doing is he is discussing uh, an issue which was very important in those days in those days the basic issue was the veda has told about are you showing the slide okay now the, the, the slide shows uh, will karma lead to moksha or will gnanam lead to moksha that is what the slide says so this was a basic discussion in those days because the same veda come to the next slide the same veda which has told about karma karma means you do this yagna you do some other yagna uh, for example swarga kamo yajeta he has to do some yagna then you want um, some, some other loka you want to go to vaikuntha you want to go, you have to go to vai kailasha or you have to get some other result so you have to do some particular yagna so for various thing some uh, say uh, some karma karma means some activity some activity has been prescribed by the veda the same veda also prescribes some upasana it is a sort of intermediate stage between this karma and jnana the same veda prescribes this upasana also then the same veda also tells what is it vedanta vedasya antah antam is nirnayah that is the final word that is the last word of veda that that tells about jnana 
Vedanta means, I told you, it is not only the end portion of the Veda, it also tells, it means that that is the final decision of the Veda. That is the, the last word, Veda Anta, that is the last word of the Veda, that is the final decision of the Veda. So, which means that the Jnana is so supreme, that has to be followed, that is the final message. So, a doubt may be there as to why uh, Veda is telling all these things. That is because human nature is such that a man is always engaged in some action. Are you still in that? You can close it. A human being is always engaged in some action or the other. You agree? So, which means that if there is nobody to tell him what is right and what is wrong, in all likelihood, he is likely to do whatever he pleases. Whatever he pleases, he will do. Because there is nobody to tell him what has to be done and what should not be done. Suppose he is a wealthy man. So he may spend his money in a good way or he may spend his money in a very, totally bad way, in a very, very negative way. So this dharma, the Veda has to give some direction to him. So if you don't tell a boy as to what he should do, he will do something else. He will waste his time somewhere. It is something like saying, a rich fellow, if you leave him just like that, he will waste his time, he will go to a casino, waste his time, he will spend his time in a very, very licentious manner. Instead of that, the, 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 the Veda or the Shastra will say, no, no, you don't do that. You do some other dharmic activity. You do some, uh, say, instead of going to a casino, you go to a sort of... Uh, do some positive thing. Your, all your energy has to be channelized. You go to a football ground, you go to some other, uh, say, uh, cricket field or something like that. Instead of uh, wasting time in a, uh, say, uh, silly place, you spend your time in a profitable, in a positive way. Then instead of spending your money, uh, all that thing in a totally licentious manner, you do some yajna, you do some dana, you will get some punya. So it will say, you, by doing this positive action, you will do some punya. So the Veda, what Veda says is, it will prescribe something and prohibit something. So prescribe something and proscribe. Proscribe also is means prohibit. So it will prescribe something and proscribe something. So it says, if you do this, you will get some punya. If you do this, you will get some papa. So there is some positive and negative result it specifies. All these are actually called Arthavada. Arthavada uh, is one word which occurs in the Vedic literature. Arthavada means praising something or condemning something. Arthavada is a, a statement which is meant to praise something or condemn something. It may suppose uh, you look into the mirror or, you know, after the sunset, then you will go to hell, it says. That means there is some, some, somewhere some statement is made like that. It does not really mean that you will go to hell. It only says that you should not do such thing. After nightfall, uh, it is only some uh, people who have some bad uh, habits, only they, they, they dress up uh, very neatly and then go, they go out. <laughs> that is the basic meaning. So like that, or uh, something else, if you read two shlokas of Bhagavad Gita every day, you will go to the Chandra Loka, the Moon Loka. So that is again an Arthavada. You will really definitely not go to Chandra Loka. Basically it is called, um, basically to praise. To, uh, to praise something, to comment something, to recommend something, there are some Arthavada Vakyas, or to condemn something, there is an Arthavada Vakya. This is something like, there is a, in Shastra, there is a word called Guda Jitvika, Guda Jitvika Nyayam, which means, uh, you want to administer some sort of bitter, um, say, medicine. If you want to give some bitter medicine, what you do? You do some sugar coating. Some sugar coated pill you give to the student, to the, uh, to the young, young child, so that this fellow, he swallows that pill because it is a sugar-coated pill and ultimately it does good for him. If you give him a bitter pill, he will not eat. You have to do some sugar coating. So this Arthavada is something like that. It is something like a lollipop. The Buddha Jitvika Nyayam, it can be translated as some lollipop Nyayam. So this is, this is that artha, this Arthavada. So the, uh, the ultimate meaning of Veda or the purport of Veda is not in things like Swarga and it's not in things like something else, some lower loka. It is the ultimate purpose. purpose is to tell a man that he has to realize himself. So all these things like Swarga and all these things, the Veda's Atparya, the ultimate purpose is not that. The ultimate purpose is 
uh, to attain self-knowledge. So that is the picture. You come to this uh, third slide. We have been talking about karma. Then karma, what exactly is karma? This is something which is which we have, we have to be very clear. This karma can be, karma literally means action. Suppose we have come here to the class, this is an action. I am telling and you are listening, this is also an action. Then after this I will go home, that is an action. I will, I suppose I am, I am doing something else, I have, after going home I do something else. So that is an action. So these are all mundane actions, say day to day actions, which a man, every man does. Somebody does some business, that is also an action. So somebody does something, he may be a teacher, he may be some other person, he may be a, say, an employee in an office. So all these things are actions which a man does. It is a very, very simple thing. But this act, such actions, they do not give any result which is associated with this afterlife. I go to the office, I do some work, I get the result. Then I do some business, I get the result. If I do business in an adharmic way, in an unjust way, then that is again against the dharma and it will give a result after life. So there are certain actions which will give result after life and there are certain actions which give result in this life. Whatever result is the mundane result, whatever is the mundane action, you get a mundane result. I do business and I do get money. So that is a drushta phala it is called. Drushta phala is, drushta is something which is seen. Adrushta phala is something which is unseen. I do some yajna. Suppose swarga kamo yajeta. So I am asked to do some yajna. Or we are asked to do some kari reshti. Or some other reshti. There, the, the swarga, the phala is not immediately seen. In fact, the, the argument of Mimam Chaka, the argument of this karma vadi is, is that, that punyam which you get, it will be a sort of deposit which will be waiting for its fruition. That deposit will be waiting for its fruition and that, uh, that is called apurva. That deposit is called apurva. Whatever punyam you get, that will be just pending like a bank balance. There is a maturity date. That maturity date is after death. That is after life, you will get the result. So there are certain karmas. But our day-to-day -day karmas, they are not like that. Our day-to-day -day karma, we can call them laukika karma. We can call them laukika karma. Laukika karma means we do in this loka. We, we do on a very, very transactional plane. Uh, are you with the slide or with me? Change it. You can change it. You can change it. So this laukika karma is something which we do in a, in a routine, in a routine manner in the world for our day-to-day -day transactions, day-to-day -day human transactions. So that is the laukika karma, where you have a drushta phala, where you see a visible result. There is an adrushta phala, adrushta is invisible, that is afterlife result. That afterlife result is something to do with the karmas which are described in the Veda. Vedas talk about some yajna. So the yajna phala is not immediately seen. It is not as though this yaji uh, performs a yajna and immediately Devendra sends some uh, chariot from above and then picks up, uh, picks up for this yaji and then takes him to Swargaloka. It is not like that. If it were to be so, this man will not do yajna. If Devendra were to send a chariot immediately and then pick him up, this man will not do yajna because he will say, let me perform my daughter's marriage. After that, I will go. So, even if he, he will tell Devendra, please wait, Lord, I will come later. So, that is what happens. So, this Laukika Karma is something which is which gives you Dhrishtapala. And Vaidika Karma, Vaidika Karma, it is called Srauta Karma. Because Veda is called Shruti. We know that Veda is also called Shruti. So, it is called Srauta Karma. In addition to that, there is another word called Smartha Karma. In that slide I showed to you, Shrauta and Smartha, I told, I told you two words. Please go back to the slide. Shrauta and Smartha. Smartha means something associated with this Smriti. Smriti is a secondary thing. In the beginning I told you, Smriti is the basic thing that is the Veda. Veda means Upanishad also. Upanishad. Smriti is something separate. For example, Bhagavad Gita is referred to as a Smriti. Then various other Smriti, Manas Smriti, Parashara Smriti and all these Smritis are there which describes the behavior of a human being in the society. So that is, they are called the Smritis. 
and the work or karma which is told in the smriti is called smarta. The karmas which are told in the smriti are called smarta. So these refer to say some uh, uh, some vrata, some pujas, some dhanam, all these things. And then for a kshatriya he has to do some yajna, some yuddha. Kshatriya has to do a battle. That is also a smarta karma because the smriti tells him as a kshatriya his duty is to fight. So that is that is his dharma, kshatriya dharma. So these are the things which are told in a smriti. You can pick over to that. Then, then the same karma, there is another thing called sakama and nishkama. These two words also we have to understand. Sakama, what is sakama? In this sakama, that is associated with desire. Sakama, kama is desire. Sakama is associated with desire. Uh, associated with desire for the fruit of the action. Sakama karma. I want the fruit. So in any Sakama karma, there is a fruit. Because the feeling of I is there. So long as the feeling of I is there, I am doing this karma. I want the result. Now by karma, we are talking about the Vaidika. Shrauta karma, Smarta karma. We have given up this uh, Laukika karma. Laukika karma, anyway you will get result. Laukika karma, whether you do it in a Nishkama manner or Sakama manner, you get result. You are doing a business. You will definitely get result. In that business, if you are doing Adharma, then of course there is an invisible uh, result also. But if you are doing in a normal Dharma, uh, Dharmic manner, you will normally get whatever is the actually result. That is a different thing. But we are now talking about this Vaidika, Sauta Karma and Smarta Karma. So in this, Shrauta Karma and Smarta Karma, there are two ways. That is either a Sakama Karma or a Nishkama Karma. Sakama Karma is where you have a feeling of I and then you get the result of it. Then Nishkama Karma, the feeling of I is subordinated. The feeling of I is, it is, it is there. It is not as though he, he has become a jnani and all that. Nishkama Karma you have to very clearly understand. Nishkama Karma does not mean that he is a jnani. Nishkama Karma, he is in that process, in that path. He is on that way to jnana. So he subordinates his I, he subordinates his ego and then he understands that there is a larger uh, karma, there is a larger frame, there is a larger canvas, there is a higher order, there is a higher order in this universe which I have to obey. I am part, I am a small part of this universe and I have to see, I have to follow this, the rules of this universe. So that is a higher order, you call it Ishwara, you call it um, Bhagavan, you call it any other manner. So he, he is a person who feels, who understands that there is a higher order, a higher order which he has to uh, follow. So that is what is called Nishkama Karma. And then he, he says, whatever I am doing is, uh, I am doing for the welfare of the society. I am doing it as an order of the Lord. I am doing it because I have to obey a higher order in society. So the higher order in the universe. So that is the, that is the picture of Nishkama Karma. So in Sakama Karma, the feeling of I is there. In Nishkama Karma, in addition to I, he also adds Ishwara. I plus Ishwara. I is subordinated. I am doing it as an order of, uh, um, say, the Lord. Or something which is prescribed for me. As that is something which is enjoined on me. So in that frame of mind, it all depends on the frame of mind. Karma is uh, getting, the, getting the fruit or otherwise is totally dependent on what is our attitude to karma. Our attitude to karma, if I say I want fruit of action, I will get it. If I have an attitude where I feel that I am doing it as part of my dharma and all that, and that, that result I will not get. I am talking about the adrushta phala, not talking about the vidul phala. The vidul phala you will anyway get. So these two things are they okay? You got these two words. That is sakama karma and nishkama karma you understood. So Nishkama Karma will be taken, come to the next, uh, next slide. Got the next slide. So Nishkama Karma, will let us see what is Nishkama Karma in a more closer way. As I told you, Nishkama Karma is doing with an Ishwara, Ishwara Arpana Bhutti. It is also called Ishwara Arpana Bhutti. Nishkama Karma, you can say it is equal to Karma with Ishwara Arpana Bhutti. It is also equal to Karma Yoga. It is also called Karma Yoga. Because a man is doing an action 
he is doing a Shravata Karma, Smartha Karma, but at the same time, he is not getting the fruit of that action. So you are doing a Karma, Shravata, Smartha Karma, and you are not getting the fruit of that action. Follow? So that is the basic meaning. It is not as though you are uh, transferring from one account to another. It is not something like transferring of an account. If this is this Nishkama Karma is based on an understanding of the dynamics of the universe, an understanding that there is a higher order, there is a higher dharma which I have to follow. So this, that is that, under, that, that understanding follows. I am doing it as a sort of command of the Lord for the welfare of the world. In fact, we are going to see one shloka in uh, fourth adhyaya. Yajnyartha karmano anyatra loko yam karma bandhana. Yajnyartha yajnyartha karmanaha anyatra lokaha yam karma bandhana means Except, uh, except in the context of yajna. Yajna does not mean again um, uh, all these um, uh, rituals and all these. Yajna has a wider meaning in the fourth chapter. Yajna, let me say, say briefly, that yajna is uh, for the, anything done uh, for the welfare of the world is yajna. That is the larger meaning of yajna. Is anything done for the welfare of the world. So, anything, any karma which is done for the welfare of the world is something which is done with an Ishwara Pranabhuti. And where the, the, the person who is doing it, he will not get the result. So, that is, uh, he will not be affected. He will not get the result means, he may be physically seeing it, he will not be affected by the result. Karma phala will not be there. So, that is what is Nishkama Karma. Then, we'll, this leads to, this is not, Nishkama Karma is not Jnana. You have seen that uh, slide. Nishkama karma is not jnanam, but it paves way for jnanam, because it gives chitta chuti. You are still with the slide? Okay, now you can switch over. You are still, uh, that in, in this Nishkama karma gives chitta chuti. So that is the picture. Then, next, come to the next idea. Next idea is Sanyasa. This Sanyasa, Sanyasa, Sam plus Nyasa. This sannyasa is, this is associated with a feeling that I am not the doer. That is because of the awareness. Sannyasa results because of that awareness. Awareness that I am no longer not a confined person in the body, person confined in the body. I am not different from Brahman. So when that is the picture, he, he finds all these things like Svarga and all these things very small. Whatever yoga, loka you describe, they all come in his uh, the very nature. When he is one with the Brahman, when the tiny wave feels that it is the uh, say ocean itself, then all other things which are contained in the ocean, they are also part of the same tiny wave. Wave is also, it is ocean. Wave is nothing but ocean. So the all other things which are contained in the ocean, they also become part of the same thing. The wave when it understands that it is nothing but one. So from that point of view, he feels that all these things like this world, this heaven and other loka, they are nothing. They are they are of not much value. So a sannyasa is a person where the knowledge is, uh, I am not the doer, I am Brahma. So when he is in that frame of mind, he is again a frame of mind, so he is free from this bondage of people. He is free from this bondage of people. For a Nishkama Karma, what happens? Nishkama Karma, he also saw, just prior to this, we saw Nishkama Karma. So he is also not getting the results. But then, what happens? He is in this present uh, life, in this present, uh, say, there are so many lives for him, there are some uh, hundreds and thousands of previous lives. So in this present life, he may not be getting. But in the past, the karma is just whatever karma which has accumulated over a period of time. That is there. So because of that, he is likely to get, he, he will definitely get uh, rebirth. The person who is doing this drama karma, let, uh, okay, let us talk about in this limited frame, the person who is committing a karma, who is do, doing some action with the feeling of I and who wants the result of the fruit of action, he will definitely get rebirth. So you clear, clear with that? Then a person who is doing this drama karma, this I is subordinated and then he feels that I am doing it as an order of the Lord. And then such a man, he will not get the, he is not affected by the fruit of the karma. In this world, in this world, in whatever actions he has done in this uh, life, 
whatever actions he has done in this life. There are, but, but there are some previous actions. The previous karma is there, that is called Sanchita karma. Whatever is that backlog, the backlog of karma is there, that is called Sanchita karma. Did I tell you one thing? The karma is a free type. One is uh, Arabdha, Prarabdha karma. Prarabdha karma is that which has already started. Something has already started uh, and according to the Prarabdha karma we are doing what we are doing now. Prarabdha means something which has just been, which has already started. Prarabdha means that which has already started. Then there is what is called Sanchita karma. Sanchita is something which is the backlog. Sanchita is something which is the backlog, which is the result of, which is there as a result of actions of the previous birth, as a result of the previous birth, you have some uh, some uh, some baggage. So that is called Sanchita Kama. Sanchi, you call Sanchi also is a baggage. So Sanchita is something, it is a baggage of the previous birth. The third one is Agami. Agami Karma is Agami Karma Phalam. Agami is that which is going to come in future. Because of this past action, you are going to get some results in future. So that is what is called Agami. So for a jnani, all these things will get nullified. For a jnani, all these things get nullified. But for a nishkama karma, a person who is engaged in nishkama karma, actions in this present uh, life only will get nullified. So his past actions will be there. So you are now coming to this life. Are you with this life? No. You are with this life. So coming to sannyasa, this knowledge, this sannyasi, he knows that he is not the doer, so he is not affected by this karma phala, so he is free from bondage of people. You okay? Then you can come back to me. Then, there is another situation. There is another situation that sannyasi has two situations. That is, uh, say, a person like a king Janaka, I told you about King Janaka, who happened to be born in a kingly family. And then it is his duty, as a king, it is his duty to rule the people, to administer uh, justice, to rule and administer justice. The king, not only King Janata, many other people were like that. In fact, the fourth chapter of our history says, Imam Vivaswate Yogam, Vokhtavar Hamadeyam, so like that. The same dharma, many Rajasya Yogi do, many Rajasya Yogi do, Rajasya Yogi do, Rajasya Yogi do, they were king and at the same time saying, so kings and saying, something like philosopher king. So philosopher king, they are called Rajasya. So not only Janaka, but Janaka's name is prominently appearing because it is there in the Upanishad Sandal. Many Rajasya is a world and they see Ramayana and Mahabharata, who come across many Rajasya. And in fact, Rama himself was one such person. The entire book Yoga Vasistha is something related to Rama only. In the Vishi, Vasistha Vishi, he tells Atma Jnana to Sri Rama. And at what stage when Rama is still very young, philosophy is not to a young man and not to a old man. Philosophy, if it is not to a old man, Okay, it will uh, uh, say at the end that while dying it will only save one man. <laughs> but philosophy, if it is not to be a young man, so he is affecting the entire society. So philosophy has to be taught to a young man and not to old people. It will teach to a old people, old person. It is something like a terminator seed, I told you. Terminator seed gives, gives only one uh, uh, one time fruit and then it, it, may, it loses its value. So that is the. So Sri Rama was God when he was very young. Even when he was taken by uh, Vishwamitra um, for killing with Marita, Subhavu and all that. Even before that, this Vajistha teaches him Vedanta. So in those days, all these uh, things became then you Vedanta. So now coming to the coming to this sannyasa, I am talking about two types of situation. You come to this slide. You are with that slide. Sannyasa, two options. Two situations. You have come to that slide. So there are two situations for a sannyasi. Like King Janaka or Lord Rama. So he is a king. Or he is in some other position. He is supposed to do some other, he has got some prescribed duty. So that is one situation. Then there is another situation where he is a parivrajaka. Total parivrajaka. He has left, given up all karma. So a sannyasi, sannyasi also, he, he does karma. It is called Jnani Karma. That Sanyasi does Karma. It is called Jnani Karma. 
And the other option is karma sanyasa. Jnani karma means as a jnani, as a wise man, he does karma. There, he does not get the result of that karma phala. Because he is a jnani, he knows that he is not the, uh, the actor, he is not the karta, so he will not get karma phala. Okay? Then, karma sanyasa, anyway he will not get it. Karma sanyasa, he has already abandoned all karma. He knows the divinity of the karma, so he has given up all karma. So he is a parivraja. So he is a Parivrajaka. Parivrajaka is the project. Parivrajaka, you know the word Paramahamsa Parivrajaka, Acharya, this is that. Parivrajaka means Paritaha Vrajati is Parivrajaka. Paritaha Vrajati means he doesn't stay in a particular place. He doesn't stay, he doesn't build a huge ashram and then he doesn't build a huge establishment. So he is a person who has no position. He has just given up all position. He just moves around, basically to spread, mainly to spread karma. Whoever is, whoever comes to him, like Ramana Maharshi of uh, the recent uh, past, he did not have a very uh, palatial ashram or anything like that when he was alive. Uh, similarly, there are many others who come across so many things in our So, this is the Parivraja. Parivraja is Paritaha Vraja. He doesn't stay in a place. For the of so that is, uh, these two types of situations uh, are appearing in the case of the Sanyasa. So now, uh, if we recollect what all I said in this class, I told about four options. One is a pure karmi who is desiring karma phala. Then there is another man called karma yogi. He is a nishkama karma. He does nishkama karma. He does not desire karma phala. And he will not get karma phala for whatever action he does in this life. But his previous life continues, his sanchita karma continues, and then because of the sanchita karma, he will get, uh, he is not free from samsara. In this life, he will not get free from action, but his sanchita karma is very much there. So he has to do uh, also vichara. His karma karma, somebody who is engaged in his karma karma, he has to do asma vichara in order to get liberated from this samsara, cycle of samsara. In order to get rid of that old baggage, if you want to get rid of that old baggage and the forthcoming uh, the karma also, you have to do Atma Vichara. But for Atma Vichara, there is no other action. That is what Shankaracharya said. Uh, karma Samyasa Purvata, Atma Jnana, Anyataha, not otherwise. Anyataha means not otherwise. Liberation is not otherwise than this. Uh, karma Sanyasa. But Shastra also says, not only to Karma Sanyasa, but there is Jnani Karma. Shankaracharya also is going to say, in the same next practice, he is going to say, that there is a Jnani also who is doing some Karma. There are several situations like that. That simply, for example, that thing is king. He is a philosopher king. Uh, just because he is a Jnani, he is not abandoned Karma. He is not abandoned Karma. He is a Jnani and he is not doing Karma. So we have come to four different types of levels. One is a pure karmi who is desiring uh, karma phala. Another is person who is a karma yogi, who is doing nishkama karma or Vishwara arpana puti. So that man is not desiring karma and he will not get karma phala and he will not get karma phala in this, uh, whatever action he does in this present life. There is another man called Jnani who is doing karma. Jnani also is doing karma. But then he will not get karma phala. Then Jnani not doing karma. You follow? There are four levels. One is Karmi, another is Karma Yogi, then Jnani doing action, Jnani not doing action. So these four options are there in the context of Karma. So this is what is the background which we have to understand. Uh, so with this uh, few, uh, with this uh, introduction, we can now go to the next. The debate, the discussion here is which option is better? The same Veda is saying, karma, you do karma. The same Veda is saying, you abandon karma and then you do atma vichara, come to the realization. Then which is better? That is the picture here. So, let us see the text. Atra Keshi Rabhu. Read it. Have you got the text? Any problem? Atra Keshi Rabhu. Okay, I will read. Not 
Lal Devendra has to send his chariot to me when I die and then he has to pick me up and take me to heaven. So that is the attitude of a hardcore Nima. A Jnani on the other hand is somebody who says, no, this is all not correct, these are all good. At a lower level, all these things are at a lower level. I was, we were talking about the higher level of things and the lower level of things. These are, these are all at the lower level. But the actual meaning of Veda is not this. The actual meaning of Veda is to realize that from So that is what Jnana says. So here we are finding one person who is somewhere in between. This is called Jnana Karma Samuchaya. Samuchaya means combination. Samuchaya means combination. So this chap is called a Jnana Karma Samuchaya Vadi, one who is advocating that Jnana and Karma can be combined. So this, is a, this is another psychology. Mimamsa is one type of one frame of mind. Jnana is one frame of mind. But this man is another frame of mind because this chap is um, a, a deep heel. Okay, let us combine these two. We do not know. Okay, if there is no harm. Then liberation is something uh, which is very remote. In fact, the Veda itself says after so many janmas also you may not get realization. So we are not very sure about that. Maybe a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, as we say in English. So maybe we do some yajna and then you, you, you get some swargam or sargalosa, maybe that is good, that is okay. So this chap he is somebody who is trying to uh, combine this uh, karma and there is light for that also. Jnana karma is not there. Okay, there is light for that many points are there. So he says, he feels that uh, these two things can be combined. That is the person. He is that type of person. He is a man who is advanced with that. We can read the text because I gave you the background already. Four minutes. So, so this line. अत्र केति राहु को सर्वकर्म दमिना के पूर्वता दात्मक ज्ञान निष्ठा मात्रा देव केवल आत्मिक ज्ञान प्राप्त करें देवान केवल यह मात्र ग्रेट ज्ञान तू गॉड बाय सर्वकर्म दमिना के पूर्वता दात्मक ज्ञान निष्ठा मात्रा इट कैन नॉट बी गॉड बाय द सर्वकर्म दमिना का दात्मक ज्ञान इट कैन नॉट बी गॉड ब Preceded by Shiva Karmana Karmana Nyasa Purvaka Shiva Karmana Nyasa Purvaka is preceded by this Atma Jnana which is preceded by Shiva Karmana Nyasa That is not, that alone is not going to give you more That alone is not going to give you more than you can give you more Then what else? Intervene? What else? What then? What then? Atmi Hotra Adi Shauta Smartha Karma Kavita Adi Jnana Adi Kaiva Nyasa Agni Hotra Adi Shrauta Smartha Karma Kalita Agni Hotra and all these things Shrauta and Smartha Karma are there I told you what are Shrauta Karma and what are Smartha Karma Shrauta Karma are those who are subscribed to the Shruti by the Veda Smartha Karma is those who are subscribed to the Shruti Like Parajar Shruti and also Gita also is called a Shruti So like that These things which are subscribed to the Shrauta Smartha Karma Sahita is Jnana. Sahita means associated. The Jnana which is associated by Sahita Karma and Smartha Karma will give you this Kaiva Jnana. Sintarji what then? Agni Hotra is Sahita Smartha Karma Sahita is Jnana is Kaiva Jnana Prapti Ji. It is Arvasu Gita is Mishiko Arthaha. The whole of Gita. Arvasu Gita is Mishiko Arthaha. Mishita Arthaha. That is the definite view. Then, next line. Jnāpakam ca āhu hu asya akthasya ata ce tvam imam dharmiyam tangraam na karishyati dharmiyam tangraam na karishyati karma nyeva adhikārasate guru karma eva tasmātvam ityādi Okay, so this line says, Nyapa Kamsa Ahuhu, this karma, this person who is advancing this argument, which, which proposes to combine both karma and jnana. So this, this man, he says, Nyapa Kamsa Ahuhu, Nyapa Kamsa, reminder, Nyapa Kamsa actually is a reminder. But here it means, not exactly a reminder, they also point out, they point out uh, the same lines of Gita. 